Hi Eleven Guardians, Unseen Inquisitor here. Welcome to New Light Basics. This is a video series in which we take a look at a particular topic for video and go over it with the lens of a newer light, right? Taking what we know and imparting it to any newer lights that might be watching or stumbling across this as a resource to help them out and where to go, what to do, or what to look out for and things to keep in mind to feel less confused, less lost, and more efficiently able to navigate the tower of power you know navigating your path to power is always a bit easier with a map and that's the idea of this series so pull up a chair sit down hang out and share your thoughts new or old light in the comment section down below and be part of the conversation all right let's check out the titan for a new light build as i mentioned in the build basics if i was going to be in a new light scenario Knowing what I know about the subclasses and the classes and builds, I would definitely be going with a Solar Titan Sunbreaker build that I call Firestorm. It's just what I call it, but it's a very popular build in general that's out there in different iterations. So we'll be going over the abilities, how I run it personally, and we'll be going over uh, armor mods, and then I'll we'll be going over synthesis because a core raise exotic armor quest for the solar subclass of titan rewards you synthoseps which is fantastic so let's dive right in first up sunbreaker unlock it for my core array i run good old-fashioned hammer of soul burning maul isn't bad but i just like hammer of soul so that's why i run it um with that being said ability wise Towering Barricade is a great defensive barricade to run, but don't count Rally Barricade out. There are plenty of instances of more special type instances where I will be running Rally Barricade. For jumps, I use Strafe Lift for the control. Throwing Hammer. This is what runs the whole build. This is perhaps the most popular melee for Titans, I would say. Um, it's not even a contest with Hammer Strike. It's all about throwing Hammer. When you strike an enemy with it and you pick it up, you get some cure, which is nice. Picking it up gives you a full recharge of your melee ability, giving you unlimited throwing hammers, provided you can pick it up. It takes actually not, it doesn't dissipate or, you know, detonate too quickly. So you get a decent amount of time to try and find it, but it can get lost in a crowd and it can take a weird bounce and go off the map. Not a big deal though, we can get it back pretty quick. For grenades, healing grenade is actually really popular with this build. It doubles down on just smashing things with your throwing hammer and keeping you alive while doing so. Um, but if you're gonna go with the damage healing grenade, there's a lot of good options here. I really like thermite. It's a wave of fire that moves forward and it's just really in theme with firestorm and part of a power fantasy isn't just being powerful but having some fun and just the effect seeming powerful as well and thermite grenade really hits that mark so for aspects we have roaring flames and soul invictus are the only two we care about for this build roaring flames final blows with solar abilities or ignitions increase the damage of your solar abilities and it stacks three times your melee counts for that which is very nice Makes your throwing hammer pretty potent once you build it up. Soul Invictus. Solar ability final blows, hammer of soul impacts, and defeating scorched targets create sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster and your super drains more slowly while standing in a sunspot, and sunspots apply scorch and deal damage to targets inside. Entering a sunspot applies restoration. Very nice. So that gives us four fragments to play with. Now, fragments, you actually are kind of, you can play this fast and loose how you want it. I have it set up for recovery in terms of recovering from losing a hammer as well as survivability because we're doing plenty of good damage with everything else. So, Ember of Searing, defeating scorched targets grants melee energy and creates a fire sprite. This is in case, you know, we do lose that. Um, what's the word I'm looking for, in case we do lose that hammer. This helps us in combination with our armas to get it back quicker. Ember of Empyrean. Solar weapon ab or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effects applied to you. So Ember of Solace. Radiant and restoration effects applied to you have increased duration anyway. And Ember of Torches. Powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. 
a thrown hammer is a powered melee attack. So this is meant just to keep us alive by getting restoration on us and keeping it for longer and radiant to help out our solar weapons and our weapons in general. I guess I could say there. Don't forget, when you are Radiant, your weapons can stun barrier champions. So that's the mods. Or not the mods, the abilities. Now we're going to look at the armor mods. So we are looking at maximizing our melee to make orbs and do stuff. So as a result, on our helmet, we're earning two stacks of hands-on, which super energy, you gain bonus super energy and melee kills, and we're running heavy ammo finder as well. Now, normally hands-on costs three energy, but the seasonal artifact mod of authorized mods melee reduces the cost. Uh, season 20, it was for grenades. Season 21 is melee. Even without that mod, we just won't run heavy ammo finder. What's important, if you only have six energy or so, is double hands on there. Moving on, for the arm piece we are running um, harmonic loader because we will be using solar weapons and that really helps. Heavy handed, your powered melee final blows create orbs of power. Harmonic loader increases reload speed of, in this case of solar weapons. Harmonic means whatever your subclass is. So solar weapons will reload faster. Heavy-handed, our powered melee final blows, throwing hammer kills, which is the bulk of how we kill things, are going to create orbs of power. And impact induction, causing damage with your melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. We'll be doing that a lot. This is going to actually net our grenade fairly often. For damage dealing grenades, this is great. We get to fling it out there and do more damage and cause more firestorm type catastrophes. For healing grenade, it lets you be a bit more cavalier in its usage and not have to really hold on to it for life or death situations only. Of course, the more dangerous an encounter, the more you will, but you get my point. It also means that once you do use it to save your bacon, you can get it back that much quicker. Chest piece, I like to run concussive dampener and then whatever resistance mods you think you'll need. If you know you're going to be dealing with a lot of arc damage, you can throw arc resistance on there or whatever. Um, so, with that said, leg armor. Innervation, Recuperation, and Absolution. Innervation reduces grenade cooldown each time you pick up an orb of power, which we're going to make a lot of with our, our hammer. Recuperation replenishes health each time you pick up an orb of power, further helping us stay alive in addition to everything else. And Absolution reduces all ability cooldowns each time you pick up an orb of power. Again, get us our class, get us our grenade, and if we have orbs out there and we lost our hammer, this will help us get our hammer back. Then we have Reaper on the class item. After using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. Again, kind of feed into our leg armor loop there. Bomber reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability. We have two stacks of that. This will allow us to get our grenade back, which is very nice for both damage dealing grenade and healing grenade. And that's our armor mods. So between that and uh, the abilities we have a very potent sunbreaker now i will be showcasing this build doing some basic stuff without any exotic armor we're also going to see it with the armor we get from the exotic quest my core array which is thankfully not so much thankfully but for neuralize synthoseps synthoseps and i currently have the uh, siva uh, ornament on but synthoseps is like one of the armor pieces for Sunbreaker builds. There are basically three big armor pieces used. Lorelei's Helm, uh, Ashen Wake, and Synthoseps. And you get Synthoseps for free basically without any real effort required aside from starting off the quest chain from my core array for solar exotic armor quest stuff as a titan. Biotic Enhancements. You, in, you get increased melee lunge range, which doesn't matter with our throwing hammer. You get improved melee and super damage when you're surrounded. So you are going to need like three enemies near you, which in a lot of content these days isn't that hard. You'll see Biotic Enhancements if you don't have a lot of buffs or debuffs on you already. You'll see it say Biotic Enhancements. This means you're getting the buff, plus your armor, if you notice, your arms will be glowing a little bit to signify you have the buff. This goes with Roaring Flame times three, and if you're gonna, if you have Tractor Cannon, 
and all that jazz, it leads to very powerful hammer throws. And um, considering that this Syntheseps uh, is one of the big three exotic pieces used for Sunbreaker, it's really awesome you get it um, as part of the Sol or yeah, in the first half of the Solar Exotic Quest for my core array. When I do showcase Syntheseps, I'll be showcasing it with Healing Grenade, just so you know. Anyways, let's go ahead and see the build in action without any exotics and with Synthoseps. And you're going to see sunspots everywhere and it's a lot of fun. So I'll see you there. And here we are going to the Nessus Lost Sector I like to use oh so much. It's going to be a quick run without the exotic, you know, no exotics on in this particular Firestorm build for this Titan. I will use the Trace Rifle a little bit just to showcase, hey, Nothing wrong with using your gun uh, while throwing your hammer a bunch. And um, in the case of this particular instance, having thermite grenade, which I do really enjoy, you can always open up with that if you wanted to, or do a throw a hammer and then throw the grenade, and then throw the grenade as you get it back and whatever else. But uh, what I really enjoy is just the ability to for this hammer's range, more or less. It doesn't just kind of drop off. Uh, it's got pretty decent range to throw. It can bounce in a weird way. As you see, it's, it hasn't really ever bounced from hit a target the same way twice. But plenty strong. We got Roaring Flames up to times three. We have Radiant up, we, uh, which really only matters for weapons. But we're Roaring Flames and everything. Even having missed that hammer throw, I was able to just punch and uh, still take down an enemy and make a sunspot. So that's very handy. I recommend if you're gonna do this build to go into some type of regular Lost Sector and just get a feel for throwing the hammer. Sometimes you swear it should've hit a target but it misses them. Or you swear it should've bounced back towards you but instead it, it kind of careens off in a random angled way and you're just kind of left wondering why. So just getting a basic feel is uh, important. You can see we're taking down yellow bar harpies, no problem, with one hammer throw. And with a super, uh, we just clear up the enemies. Um, this build will make a pretty good super generator for yourself. So don't be too afraid or too shy of your super um, in whatever content you're in. But just like that, we basically clear up this lost sector without any exotics. And this will work the same way in strikes and some lower tier... Uh, activities for sure but of course an exotic will help and we'll see Syntheseps right after this. Okay so I threw Syntheseps on the Titan here. I changed my grenade to healing grenade so you can see what is kind of the quintessential solar Titan build um, in terms of running it like how, how it's used and run so often. Firestorm has tremendous survivability in this configuration. Firestorm being what I call this type of build. Now my throwing hammer usage is going to be, of course, very high and my my um, success with the throwing hammer is going to vary. As you can see, I'm going to whiff. And I whiff several times because I'm just not very good. But even with that, the build recovers very swimmingly with getting my melee recharged rather quickly and still able to be effective while I'm waiting for it to recharge. So with that said, couple things to, to say specifically before I just commentate a bit more is that A, Syntheseps are a subclass uh, neutral exotic, so it is most popular on Sunbreaker, but its effects can still work as an exotic armor piece on any subclass for Titan. It's not unique to Solar only. Also, soloing a Legend Lost Sector is possible for so many different builds for all the classes and all their subclasses. What I like about this is that this level of power and survivability potential is free for the taking for a newer light, quite literally, right? In, in the form of being guaranteed to get single sets from my core array, which means your tower of power climb is going to feel suitably epic throughout all of it because you're gonna have the ability to, with the, of course the mod set up and everything else, um, achieve results like this in whatever content you're doing for PvE. 
And even if you don't have synthoseps yet, right, because you just haven't finished that quest chain, or got to the point in the quest chain for it, or it's just whatever for you, as you saw, granted in a regular lost sector, but we still saw the power of a, this build without an exotic piece at all. Synthoseps is a great exotic use. The, the helmet Laurelis Helm is also another really popular um, exotic for this build. But the way the build runs in its healing grenade, throwing hammer form with the aspects, fragments, and everything else doesn't change. So um, that's some food for thought there. Don't be too reckless. There's a difference between being aggressive and being reckless. And sometimes you can skirt that fine line too closely to the reckless side when you're trying to get up close and personal for doing melee hits like this. So just um, temper your potentially reckless aggression. Um, again, I mean, the fact that this build is able to just eat damage to the face and keep going like this, you know, being smart about it, of course, and not have to just hang back and it's got a lot of momentum. I don't want to say speed to it, but a lot of momentum and just continuing to press your attack on the enemy. And it kind of literally thrives on that. That makes the Firestorm build for me really fun and definitely like the reason why this is what I would go for if I was in a new light situation. So, um, you know, definitely worth giving a shot if you are a newer light with a Titan character. I would have to say, Synthoseps, knowing all, not just Titan, but all the exotic armor pieces you get from my core array, depending upon what class you are, Synthoseps is up there as one of the best ones, period, I think, that you get from my core array. So that's pretty cool for newer light Titans. Anyways, thanks for sticking through it. If you made it this far, congratulations. Consider subscribing to be part of future conversations like this one and other stuff as well. Uh, by being subscribed and being able to see them when they drop so share your thoughts on this build and you know solar titans in general do you run one or are you interested in running one share it all and any questions you have in the comment section down below and until next time guardians stay frosty